guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody all right so i welcome one and all in my class night and uh, we have today the discussion of paper number 2 october 2023 uh, i'm really sorry for being uh, unable to take the class last week but hopefully now we will all have a uh, smoother sessions to come it was a very very important medical emergency in my family because of which i was unavailable and i'm really really uh, sorry for uh, for that because the the schedule gets disrupted uh, <clears throat> in fact i just come back yesterday so uh, today is my class i'm coming back to my students and i'm very very happy to see you all in the class and uh, without you know wasting uh, further time let's begin the class today uh, before that i want two very important things to be done all the students who are right now in my class should also enter the chat room because this is going to be an interactive session between you and me and we, it makes it more interesting more fun to have uh, you know so many students there in the class also having their own views and uh, answers when i ask them the questions so please all of you make sure that everybody who is there in the class night has already entered in the chat room if you do not know how to do that the answer is very simple you've already come through the main page of my telegram right there is a pinned message there just click on that it will take you straight to my chat room okay once you enter the chat room just stay there because a lot of questions will be asked and it will be an interactive session between you and me so we're going to have a lot of fun in the class that's one the second and the most important is that uh, physically uh one to one i want to extend my deep deep congratulations to all the students who have recently given me their lovely news of clearing the dnb practicals congratulations a very very big hug from me to all of you i'm very very proud of you you've done enormously well you've done your best to give your uh, dnb a best shot and all of you have been rewarded for it so it's teeny mini my guidance but a lot of effort from your side it's not easy to crack dnb practical especially but you've done a very very good job so <clears throat> there were students who had presented their case to me as well there were students who had individually presented the case to me as well there were students who had taken just my practical course there were students whom i have guided and all of them have come back with their beautiful beautiful result i'll be um, very soon uh, putting up their podcast on my telegram channel and i would Uh, urge everybody to please listen to the podcast because the podcast they are uh, you know a reflection of uh, what preparation goes on for the examination uh, right before practicals and right before theory so that you also get some insight some useful tips from your uh, seniors to help you out in your journey of dnb all right so let's begin tonight's class uh, with october 23 paper number 2 now some questions were very very simple okay for example this question this is like an undergraduate level question all right so what i'm trying to tell you in this question is that my idea of discussing this question paper with you is that to give you an insight as to how to answer a five mark question vis a vis a three mark question and what exactly is the examiner looking forward to all right now give me a quick thumbs up everybody in the chat room if you can hear my voice and can see the uh, slides as well please a quick thumbs up a quick uh, response from all of you so that we can move ahead fast and uh, finish off this class in time so that the others can also be benefited by my coming amig mean, upcoming classes all right so can i please get a quick thumbs up you can see my uh, screen and you can hear my voice all right okay thank you thank you so much uh, uh, now uh, this question describe the changes in coagulation factors and right it's a very very old question very very easy question this should have been a three mark question actually because there's not much to do i'll just give you one slide here this is the slide you know what it is this is s okay protein s you can see the arrow is going down this is you know the the protein s decreases why am i saying decreases is uh, you know one step uh further from what we're going to discuss right now protein s decreases in pregnancy platelets decrease in pregnancy factor 11 and factor 13 they decrease in pregnancy which is why the decreasing arrow is there correct on the other hand there is no change is a cross there's no change in factor four, factor 2 factor 5 and protein c rest everything increases rest everything increases so if you talk about von willebrand factor or factor 8 or factor 7 all these factors they increase 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 because pregnancy is a pro coagulant state so 
we just we just discussed factor 2 5 there's no change but fibrinogen increases d dimers increase <coughs> platelet to platelet to platelet uh, factor c factor 8 9 10 12 1 will bring all of them increase so all you have to remember is that this decrease and there is no change in this rest anything that i'm going to ask you fibrinogen or uh, you know d dimer or von willebrand factor factor 8 factor 9 you say the increase pregnancy being a procoagulant state so everybody knows that but examiner wants to know these things from you okay they know that you will be writing all that you know that uh, you know the plasma volume changes and the hematocrit changes and you know there is a hemodilution but i'm not asking about that i'm asking very simple i'm asking about the changes in coagulation factors i'm not interested in plasma volume or hemo concentration or hemodilution i'm not interested in the hemodynamics i'm more interested in the coagulative dynamics right so if you do right you know excessive thrombin generation is increased okay two to three fold increase in fibrinogen increases okay there is a 100000% increase in factors number of, you know 7 8 9 10 12 this is what they want to know what is 118 as well as a 400% increase in one even one hundred factors that in, that also increases correct so these things they are there in the pregnancy which is what we want to know uh, through this for this question and if you can just make this small uh, you know what do you say uh, table in one shot they can you can understand or your examiner would be able to understand that what all increase what all decrease and this is a little more jumbled up i had i been in your place i would have made the ones which there is no change then the ones which decrease and then the ones which increase and by how much if you can remember remember that factor 7 this one this increases by almost 1000% uh, and if you can increase uh, remember d dimer sorry the d dimer it increases by 400% these two are like pretty prominent which is why i would want you to remember correct all right so maybe this was a three mark question but they asked for a five mark question but we can elaborate accordingly then they asked the management of dic in pregnancy now dic whenever this word comes okay you are thinking it's a disseminated intravascular coagulation so let's go in for an anticoagulant but see the first question this is why i've written the, this thing down as your first sentence they are rarely used anticoagulants are rarely used when thrombus formation is likely to lead to imminent death okay so you wouldn't want that to happen it's actually a very tricky situation so you have consumptive coagulopathy is what we call it correct you've heard this term consumptive coagulopathy what you have is basically a deficiency of the coagulative material whatever is there already is already forming coagulopathy so it's so much used that the actual coagulants are still remaining right it's still remaining so you need those factors to be the answer of dic is basically a lot of blood and blood components so blood components in the form of platelets in form of ffp cryoprecipitate in forms of blood uh you know whole blood all this is required so platelets may be transfused if the count is less than less than 10000 per cubic millimeter all right less than 10000 now if any intervention is planned less than 50000 is you need to supplement that 90000 if cesarean is planned you cannot do a cesarean section with less than 90000 platelets so that time even that time you'll have to transfer you know uh, transfuse ffp should be administered in an attempt to replenish the coagulation factors that is a very quintessential for dic okay component therapy is used when blood volume is less uh, loss is significant despite surgical uh, uh, surgical loss during the operative period emergency use of blood components requires concurrent assessment you have you have to give the uh, coagulative factors that means you'll have to give the blood and blood components at the same time you have to be very sure that the blood is uh, also having a lot of hemostasis and now the bleeding has stopped and you have to keep giving getting the inr checked so that you know that whether the patient is still at risk of bleeding out too much so that's the answer for dic so there is high incidence of transfusion related acute lung injury trolley that they call it right so with platelet transfusions you have to be a little cautious on that the answer basically for dic management is blood and blood components so this massive blood transfusion which is needed to replace the blood loss equivalent to greater than the patient's blood volume so you might require 70 ml per kg in adults in less than 24 hours just imagine that's huge huge blood volume uh, you know uh, replacement 
then autologous transfusion yes but it's pretty messy because you have to be very very sure of uh, the uh, hemostasis if you're doing of course if you're doing a surgery then you may you may require an autologous uh, you know transfusion that you are you know giving the blood uh, at the same time when the blood loss is also there right so you have to be pre operative blood donation has to be there intraop hemodilution has will be there right but you have to salvage the blood from the surgical area and then re transfuse it reinfuse it during the surgery so it's a little messy little tricky not much used except for patients who are who cannot handle so much of blood transfusion or who are jehovah's witness or the ones who have clearly said no to any kind of blood transfusion in their advanced directive but that does not happen so much in india uh, so autologous transfusion is rarely required but uh, in life threatening situations especially at the time when the patient is undergoing a surgery as well it's a very very good option so you have to uh, include these things as well in the management of dic but basically you have to remember that hemostasis is the utmost important thing and uh, the the blood and blood products have to be adequately given for dic to be managed and there are a lot of uh, you know these uh, flow charts flow diagrams and uh, things given on the on the net some of them are given in your uh, textbooks if you find any chart well enough to uh, you know put down in dic i'll also search some uh, somewhere in which gives it all i did not find any chart which gives it all mostly things were irrelevant some of them were on the uh, you know positive factors etiological factors of dic i don't want that but yeah if you've got a, if you get a very nice algorithm for that be my friend of course you can put it down in your answers okay anywhere where you can put an algorithm okay uh, remember one thing guys whenever uh, the management of anything is asked okay whenever the management of anything is asked always start from as i've already said always said always start right from the history examination investigation then the management they do not want to exactly know only the but dic is such a thing which they said they've already given you the diagnosis right so once the diagnosis has been made you need to know at least the monitoring and the transfusion part that is what is uh, good for dic that you can easily write down this much this is going to be sufficient okay ffp has to be uh, given for replenishing of coagulation factors whenever the inr is you know more than 1.5 and uh, component th therapy is basically for volume blood volume loss and platelets of course when the, when you undergoing any you know uh, operative intervention like maybe cesarean less than 90 you'll have to transfuse blood vaginal delivery less than 50 you have to transfuse blood otherwise less than 10000 uh, normal delivery uh, requires less, at least 50000 for for a normal patient 10000 and below you'll have to transfuse blood okay otherwise she can still manage they say antenatal period the patient can still manage with even 30 40000 blood but at the time of any intervention any intervention you know forceps vacuum normal vaginal delivery so there you know will have, have to transfuse blood and then uh, carry her forward with any uh, interventional procedure 